Hello, I am Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 11 and 12. Okay, both of these episodes contain feels. Lots of them. And I actually kind of felt slightly, not a lot, but slightly sorry for Queen Beryl. A little bit, but at the same time, it's like, oh, yes, yet again, the female villain is a villain because she was unlucky in love. Can a female be a villain for any other reason? Although, I'm okay with Queen Barrel being that way, because I don't really remember her being like that in the original manga. It kind of adds something to her character. It just seems very overplayed. Can we have a female villain who was not unlucky in love? Okay, Sia from Hyrule Warriors. God, even Maleficent. She went evil because she was betrayed by her beloved. I guess it's kind of like a trope. Everyone has to be in a relationship by the end of the TV series. Yeah, well, they're at least playing it reasonably well. You know, tropes exist because it's they're common story plots, but done well, it doesn't mean they're a bad thing. They're doing a wonderful job with the animation as usual. Very shiny. Definitely shiny. Uh, one thing I really noticed this time was that each scout has a different floral pattern on the planet behind her. I mainly noticed originally Sailor Moons, which, you know, roses, moonlight and roses, romance. And Mercury's, because it was blue and I like blue. What stood out to me this time was Sailor Venus had carnations, which... I happen to like carnations a lot, which is why I was able to recognize them, probably. And it made me wonder if perhaps each scout is associated with a particular flower because the flower is either associated with the astrological sign that corresponds to their planet or is perhaps related to the scout's birth month or the virtue that they stand for because Sailor Moon is love and justice, you know, you have intelligence, you have beauty, so it thought. And for anyone who thought Mamoru was creepy when he was good, god those red eyes. And not just that, the way he behaves kind of adds to that creepy factor. And how much he hurts her, I'm like, god, this just became an abusive relationship. Ugh. Yeah, but if you think about it, the four kings attack all of the Sailor Scouts, and we have heavily implied relationships between all of them. So it's already been established that the female characters are forced to fight their male counterparts because they love them. Though that does remind me of poor Jupiter. God, she just gets tricked and used so often this version of the series. I know, I was like, oh, not only... Did you get tricked when you first showed up? Mamoru was able to pull his hypnotic suggestion on you. God, you let him into the command center. I'm pretty sure that's not how it went in the manga. I remember Mamoru playing on the Sailor V system, so he was making ridiculous progress, and Luna and Artemis were freaking out because he was getting so many of their secrets, because everything's tied to how well you can play the Sailor V video game. Yeah, I never really noticed that before, of course. I haven't read the manga as heavily as you have, or really remember the TV show as clearly as I thought I did, because I'm re-watching the original version now, and I'm like, wow, I forgot a lot of stuff. Also, there is a lot of filler in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is kind of like, um, I don't know if this is a fair comparison, but this is kind of like Dragon Ball Z Kai. <laughs> like, we got rid of all the filler. Happy now? <laughs> Except, well... Yes and no, because the original Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z manga were much more succinct. So in a way it is like taking the series and bringing it back closer to the manga. The difference is Dragon Ball Z Kai was done with editing, and Sailor Moon Crystal is just plain shiny. Yeah, all brand new, all HD, and they're even making improvements when they do the Blu-ray releases over in Japan. I can't wait until we get our Blu-ray DVD combo sets over here. <laughs> My pocketbook can wait a little bit for that. Yeah, you're right on that. I got way too many things. <laughs> too much manga, too much anime, no time, and no money. Every time I go look at websites, ah, my wallet screams. But moving on. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I, I really like how the sword really comes back into play. Definitely. Both that, you know, Venus just carrying it around. It's like, oh, d do I look suspicious? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I like how it goes from being black to shiny when Serena uses it and she really focuses on, wait a minute. This is this and... Huh, and then writing appears on it. Yeah, and it says something about making the legendary saber crystal whole, and apparently a piece of it is in Edamon, so I'm like, okay, and... Oh wait, he, she's going to end up stabbing Edamon, isn't she? Or Tuxedo Mask, that way I'm not butchering that poor name. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I knew they were going to end up like stabbing him or slicing him at some point because of that. I'm like, that's a nice little subtle hint there. I know, but I was hopeful, you know, because... In episode 11, he had a couple reaction moments, you know, the name, Serenity, you know, and the girl who's uh, Furuchan's friend, you know, the Book of Minerals. They happen to have all four of them on the cover. Though episode 12 was kind of full of tragedies near the end. Whoops! Killed all of them! My fault! <laughs> You're no longer use for me. I zap you. Right in front of them. No! Mm hmm I'm like, ooh, that was harsh. Very harsh. That's kind of like the reverse of a deus ex machina. Instead of saving the heroes, you severely mentally damage them. <laughs> like, we didn't really need to do this, but we wanted to! Let's make them feel even more sad. Kill all of them! What? Kill all of them. Just, just blow them up. Okay. <laughs> but see, you couldn't allow the four kings to live once they regained their memories, because then they were good again. And instead of having to fight five Sailor Scouts, you would have to fight five Sailor Scouts and four Dark Kings, who are no longer dark and who are going to be very pissed off at you for controlling them and tricking them. Yeah, but I wanted, to, wanted them to die in a more dramatic fashion, not just, oh look, they're dead now, which is pretty much what happened. <laughs> oh, I got my memories back. Now I'm dead. Son of a... <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd rather they, like, died protecting a blast from Queen Beryl. Not Queen Beryl, I mean C Queen Metallia. I think that's what her name is. <laughs> um, still possible. Do recall that even after they were killed, they spoke to the scouts. So their spirits can still act. Recall in the first Sailor Moon series that all four scouts are killed and their spirits still help the princess in the final battle. Mm. And speaking of scouts getting killed... And going back to, oh look, that's stabbed to skin a mask. Oh look, that's reenact what happened on the moon. <laughs> I cut you, and then I stab myself. We both die in happiness. What is this, Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> yes, but it's playing out differently this time because it's not Queen Beryl who's killing Endymion. It's Princess Serenity who's slashing him and then turning the sword on herself. And then as he's stumbling and they're falling, they fall into a kiss. I'm like, really? <laughs> he's he's still evil at this moment, so no. <laughs> what I also find is like they like completely forgot that slightly the animators apparently because they cut from them kissing, and then they cut to them being in such a way that they couldn't have kissed as she was falling. So it's like, huh? You forgot something, the animators. I wonder if you'll fix that in post. <laughs> I'm really liking this new version of the series so far. There's just lots of interesting stuff going on. Any more points about the episodes? Um, that we again have something that people point out as a flaw or an annoyance in the original series. You know, Tuxedo Mask is basically powerless. He's best when he's evil because nobody's trying to kill or kidnap him. And he gets powered up by whatever dark force brainwashed him. <laughs> He's managing to do more damage to the Sailor Scouts than he has ever done against any villain in the entire previous 10 episodes. It's still, the red eyes are creepy. Also makes you wonder why, um, is it because they're using more power on Endemon or uh, more power on Tixima Mask? Or they brought him back? Because the other kings, as it were, or guardians or whatever you would call them, their eyes are normal compared to his. <laughs> because his are red, theirs aren't. Wouldn't it make sense for their eyes to be red, too? <laughs> I think theirs was more of a spell of forgetfulness, where his almost borders on possession, because the coloring is very similar to Queen Materia's. And I said Materia because I'm 
trying to listen to the Japanese pronunciation and in the writing for the episode they have the R and I know R and L are very non-distinguishable from the Japanese lexicon but it sounds more like an R but in English we have it as metallia like metallic. Oh well I think we're both enjoying the series anyways even if we can't pronounce the characters names. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't believe that I had Endymion's name wrong for so many years. Well, we were watching it back in an era, and I don't think getting original Japanese audio was really that easy. <laughs> so we didn't have Japanese voice actors giving us pronunciation guides, as it were. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little very forgivable. No. I also find it interesting that this time the animators chose to keep Mamoru in the tuxedo mask outfit and just take away the mask and hat, where, if I recall correctly, in the original series, when he's kidnapped and brainwashed, he's in the Prince Endymion armor, which means he has a sword. Also, Endymion is left-handed. Never noticed that before. Yeah, me either. Good thing you picked that up. <laughs> well, he had the sword in his hand and he was advancing on Sailor Moon, and I was like, oh, Endymion's left-handed. Interesting. That, or the enemies forgot he was right-handed. Um, or they forgot that he was facing a certain way that he would be holding it in his left hand. Because <laughs> I know I've done that sometimes when I'm drawing someone, like, oh wait, they're right-handed. That's not the right hand, it's on the right side of the paper, but... <laughs> well, we could go back and look at earlier episodes and watch for him to be holding things, and we can also pay attention in the remaining episode. I was wrong on the numbers of this season, it's 13. The next season has been announced for 26, so yeah, that's I... why I was confused. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, you're wrong. We're like almost done. Uh, well, we can both do some research before we record the next episode so we can get all this information and verify some of the stuff we've been speculating on here. Because we have, what, two weeks now? <laughs> In theory, but it's almost Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> As creepy as I find Red-Eyed Endymion, when he had the tuxedo mask outfit going, I was like, hmm, that could kind of work as a character design for a vampire. <laughs> well, they usually are in tux-like outfits. I know, but just all this tragedy. I mean, we've kept a pretty light tone, but everybody's dying and suffering, and we managed to defeat Queen Beryl... And we still lose? But <laughs> Metalia's not supposed to have enough power to be fully awakened yet. Oh, great. She just switched from using Beryl to using Endymion. This is gonna suck. Where is our awesome J-pop song that's supposed to make us feel hopeful because everything's working out? <laughs> you know, the hero's trapped in the corner, but no, the their theme song kicked in, so we're like, yeah, they're gonna win! <laughs> Yeah, at, at this point, if I was watching the series for, if this was my first exposure to the series, I would kind of be expecting them to lose. Because right now, the only thing that's keeping me going of, oh, yeah, it'll all be okay, is because I've read the manga. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are your final thoughts on the episodes? That I'm glad it's the holidays, because otherwise two weeks would be way too long to wait. <laughs> Uh, I concur. The, both of these episodes have been very kind of tugging at you, you going, what? but, uh, I mean, how? <laughs> and you even made me feel just a little bit for the bad guy. I don't like you. You made me have feels for a bad guy. And not the kind of feels of, I'm going to hurt you. No, it's the, oh, that's a little tragic. <laughs> I know, but I like villains with depth. So it's like, oh, it's not just that you were possessed by Metallia, it's that you were jealous and heartbroken. And that gave an opening for Metallia to get into your heart. Mm-hmm. And so even now, when you're crushing the Sailor Scouts, and even though you told the Four Kings that if the Silver Crystal wasn't actually inside Mamoru's body, that just to be rid of him, you still kept him because you're like, finally, this time he's mine. And then you lost to the Sailor Scouts. And he was also like, it will be together forever. Finally. Damn it, I'm turning to dust. <laughs> um, whoever thought that forever could be severed by the sharp knife of a short life. God, I couldn't even say it with a straight face. 
I do happen <laughs> to like the band Perry, though. <laughs> uh, well, I hope all of you have enjoyed listening to our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal episodes 11 and 12. If you liked my art, you can find me on DeviantArt and Tumblr. And if you want to keep up to date on the podcast, you can follow us on Tumblr as well. If you liked my artwork enough that you want to support me, I am open for commissions. And if you liked our podcast, please consider subscribing. Links in the description.